Joe Anderson and Al Klopine of Pure Financial Advisors have the answers to your retirement plan. This is your money, your wealth. Hey, I got really good news and I got really bad news. The good news is more and more of you are actually doing some retirement planning. You're putting pen to paper to figure out exactly what you need to do to have a successful retirement. The bad news is, is that you're using terrible assumptions. These assumptions will blow up your retirement. So the good news is that people are actually starting to plan. The bad news is that they're not using the right numbers. That's what we're gonna get in today. So you don't fall into those traps. We can help you develop a retirement plan using the right assumptions, making sure that you are aware of what's ahead of you in your retirement. That's what's on my mind today. All right, hey, a lot of things we wanna get into, we're gonna dive right in. A, 10,000 baby boomers are turning 65 every single day for the next 13 years. What that means is that you have to start planning for retirement. Now, most of you, I wouldn't say most, I would say some of you are actually taking the appropriate steps to do some planning. The problem is the assumptions that you're using are wrong. For instance, let's say if you're spending $100,000 a year, the assumption that you're using in retirement might say, hey, I'm only going to spend 50,000. Try to do that, I'm gonna give you a goal. If you're spending $10,000 a month this month, okay, next month, Try to spend five, cut that in half. It's almost impossible. So right out the gates, your numbers are wrong. That's the last thing that you wanna do and later in life, run out of money, so don't do that. To help me out, let's get it full circle. Let's bring in the big man, Big Al Clopine. Mr. Clopine. Yes, good sir. to see you, my friend. Good to see you too, and uh, and I'll tell you, I mean, the assumptions that you make are critical in how uh, this is all going to work. It's everything, right? It's absolutely everything because numbers are just numbers. But if they're wrong, what I mean, th they're just numbers on a paper. Yeah, and I would say this that really, maybe a generation ago it didn't matter quite so much because we had more pension plans, and we had. Um, People weren't living as longer, they were retiring later in some cases, and so you didn't really have to worry about your savings and how to create your own retirement income. Now you do. Now we have less pension plans and more uh, 401ks, so you gotta design your own retirement. But the assumptions are critical. So right off the bat, I would say this, is we're not being realistic on our spending. In fact, the question is, do you even know what you're spending? Have you thought about retirement spending? Is it gonna be the same? Is it gonna be more, less? Most people think they're gonna spend less in retirement, but our experience is they'll probably end up spending more because they have more time for travel and other things like that. Then once you do figure out your spending, it's like, well, how much nest egg do I need to make this all work? What is your number? So we're gonna get into that today. And then taxes, I gotta tell you, this is a big miss by a lot of people. Uh, people don't realize when they pull money out of their 401ks, when they get money from their pension plans, social security, it's all taxed at ordinary income rates. And then finally, when are you going to retire? We've got some new stats for you and it may surprise you. So Joe, it's, it's really understanding what assumptions you need to make and so that you can do the right thing before you retire. Right, it's, it's, it's planning to figure out how is your money gonna last you for the next 20, 30, and 35 years in some cases? Your retirement years might be longer than your working years. So you wanna make sure that the numbers are accurate when you're putting pen to paper. Because if you're making crazy assumptions, like what we see is that, hey, I'm, I'm going to receive an 8% rate of return, inflation's only gonna be 2%, right? I'm going to receive, you know, we can go on and on and on about these crazy assumptions. So we wanna just narrow it down to make sure that you get a good understanding of what is appropriate because you always want to plan conservatively. And I think a lot of times now, people are not necessarily prepared for retirement, so they try to pad their numbers so they can make themselves feel better. Well, but that's not going to do anyone any good. They do, and, and really, you got to kind of take a look at what kind of activities that you want to spend in retirement. And, and we know that a lot of you are gonna travel more often. In fact, here you go, 49%. Uh, this is according to a survey by AARP a couple years ago. 49% will travel more often. And then we've got, uh, what is that, 66% anticipate more time with hobbies and interest, and 71% spend more time with their families. All great things, 
but it causes more dollars out of your pocket. If you're traveling, if you're going to spend time with your family, you're probably going to want to spoil your grandkids. Uh, and if you're doing hobbies, it's, it's spending money. Well, I mean, if you think of it like this, Al, so once you retire, right, you don't necessarily get a day off. It's Saturday every single day, right? So what do you do on Saturdays? You find time to spend a little bit more money. Actually, we have a clip here of looking at some misconceptions or misconceptions. Thank you, sir. Uh, when it comes to spending in retirement, because you got to take the old school rules of retirement out the window and really take a look at what people are doing. So let's take a look at this clip. For many retirees, their golden years are spent knocking off items off their bucket list or enjoying hobbies they never had the time to do while they were working. This is when you retire, every day is a Saturday. And on Saturdays, what do we do as Americans is that we tend to spend more money because we have more time. But when it comes to planning for their retirement, many people buy into the outdated formula of estimating they'll spend only 70 to 80 percent of the money they do while they're working. Uh, and that could be in a variety of different things that, that I see with my clients and that might entail starting a new hobby, starting a second career, going back to school traveling. So all of these things cost money. Research from Boston College shows that half of all American households will not have enough money in retirement to maintain their standard of living before they retired. It's not just the drive for a good time that's pushing up the unexpected costs in retirement. Now the entire cost of your health insurance is borne by you. Um, so prior to turning age 65 when you are covered by Medicare, now you've got to go out and not just find your own health insurance, but you have to pay for it as well. And that cost could be in the range of, of anywhere from 1000 to over $2,000 a month for a couple for comprehensive health insurance. I mean, that's a significant expense that needs to be factored into your plans. The key to having enough money to enjoy your retirement is planning and making sure you realistically estimate the cost. It's impossible to know whether you're even close to reaching your goals going to retirement if you don't sit down and figure out where you're at first. Sure, bottom line is whether clients are working with an advisor or doing things on their own, uh, it's always a good idea to have a second set of eyes take a look at what you're doing to make sure and get some validation that you're on the right track. Then all you have to do is focus on enjoying the good times ahead. That's all you got to do, Al. Just but focus on the good times That's ahead. That's what I want to do. Because focus it is on the good so times. grim out there. Everyone is going to be broke. <laughs> but just focus on the good times. Just focus on the well, good times. Well, it ended up on a high note. <laughs> well, right? Yes, it so, did. <laughs> so that's, that's good. But, so uh, here's what you do, right? The, well, yeah. for, so first things first, you got to figure out exactly how much money that you need and what is that nest egg. And so there's a lot of different things that you want to consider when to determine how much money that you need. So what age do you want to retire? Is it going to be age 55, 65, 70, or maybe a little bit longer? How long are you going to live in retirement? What is the longevity of your overall family? Then you take a look at, like we've talked about thus far, is the spending. How much are you spending? How much do you want to maintain as a lifestyle? Are you going to spend a little bit more or spend a little bit less? And then you have to take a look at what your income sources are in retirement, such as Social Security, such as pension plans. Maybe you have a real estate portfolio. How much income is coming from that? Maybe you might even work part time. So you want to make sure that you factor all of those fixed income sources. That's going to give you a formula to figure out exactly what your number should be, Al. And I think if people just start here, then they can realize the dream and live happily ever after. I think that's, that's, that's the, goal. the goal. That's <laughs> that, the goal. That is the goal. And let's go over an example or two, Joe, because this will kind of help solidify what the nest egg that you should have. And right off the bat, this, this first method, I'll give you a couple methods. This first method works pretty well if you're in your 50s or even 60s because you already have some idea on what you want to spend in retirement. So let's, let's say that you desire to spend $90,000 per year in retirement. So that's step one. Step two is you look at your fixed income. So that's going to be Social Security, maybe pensions. Let's say that's $50,000. You subtract your fixed income from your desired spending and you get a shortfall, $40,000 of shortfall. And you simply take that shortfall and, and multiply it by 25 to give you an approximation as to what nest egg that you might need. And believe me, that's just an approximation. There's really a lot of factors. And for some of you, you may need more and some less. But that's at least a starting point. Right. I mean, that gets you in the same zip code, right? Right. I mean, Because most people have no idea. Is it 200000 Is it a million? Is right. it $2 million? Because $100,000 is a lot of money. And then you look at this. Wow, I need a million dollars just to create $40,000 of income. 
income for the next 20 or 30 years. Because, for example, we'll have someone come into the office and they'll say, you know what, Joe Al, I want to retire tomorrow. I want to spend about $150,000 a year. Okay, that sounds really good. Well, how much money do you have? Well, I have 300000 I said, okay, well, have a good two years. You're done, right? It's simple arithmetic just to at least get you in the same zip code or area code of how much money that you actually need. And I know it's a scary thought to Dante because these numbers are quite large, but the fact of the matter is that's life. I mean, you have to save a little bit more money. you got to bear down and figure out exactly what you want to do to do the planning to get it done. Yeah, now let me give you another strategy, and this works for any age, including those that are younger. So you can just take your gross pay, take 15% of your gross gross pay and tr try to save that. So let's say you're $100,000 a year in salary, 15% of that is $15,000 per year. So if you can invest that and earn 7% over a 25 year period, it's almost a million dollars and over 30 years it's $1.4 million. Particularly if you're in your 20s, 30s, even 40s, you may not know what it's going to what you want to spend in retirement. But at least if you're saving 15%, you're on, you're on a good path. Realize, though, for a lot of you, that's going to be too difficult. So start small. Start saving 1%, 2%, and work your way up to 15% would be the long-term goal. Right. And I think a lot of people have heard this, too, is that you want to pay yourself first, right? You pay bet. yourself first. Make sure that you're putting money away into your retirement accounts, your Roth IRAs, 401ks, and the like. Start there, right? Start saving now because it's never too late to start. So if you're in your 50s and 60s and you're saying, man, these are really large numbers, I, I feel hopeless. Don't do that because a lot of people do, but then all, the, all of a sudden they start saving a little bit money, they get a little bit more encouragement, and that next thing you know, they can have the retirement, that, what they really wanted. Uh, don't go anywhere. When we get back, one of the biggest misconceptions or misnomers, well, we can't say misnomer, uh, <laughs> misunderstanding of your expenses in retirement is taxes. Uh, Big Al and I are going to break it down for you to take a look at the tax code, not only today, but where it was just a few years back and where we think tax rates are going to go and what you can do to protect yourself today. So do not go anywhere. You don't want to miss this. The show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. We'll be back in just a second. Welcome back to the program. The show's called Your Money or Wealth. Uh, Joe Anderson, Big Al Clopine, hanging out, uh, talking financial planning, retirement, and some terrible assumptions uh, that we're finding that most of you are making when it comes to your overall retirement planning. So we're trying to educate you on figuring out exactly what you need to do to make sure that you have a successful retirement, because that's the game plan for a lot of you that are approaching retirement. Uh, we're also giving some quizzes. So let's, uh, is this a multiple choice, Al, or is this no, a true false? This is true false. Oh, just wait till next segment. Yes, it's a good it's a good question here, true false question. Since the stock market has earned almost 10% annually over the last 80 years, that's a good number to use for investment returns. True or false? <coughs> well, that's a, a lot of people do. They do. No, In absolutely. In fact, even even worse, a lot of people say then I can spend 10% of my portfolio every year. Right. Yeah, if I have $100,000, I'm going to get 10%. I'll spend 10%. We're all good. Right. No, not even close uh, because it's the sequence of returns. Even though the average might be 10%, but some years you might get 12%. Some years you might get minus 20%. Then you might get, you know, depending on the markets, right? So, no, do not use 10%. We feel a lot more comfortable using probably anywhere from a 55 uh, to a 6.5% rate of return, of course, depending on your age of what a good assumption would be for a target rate of return. So don't use those big numbers, even though it might look good on your spreadsheet if you use those large numbers. But be conservative because right now we're in uh, the, the, the markets are uncharted waters. You know, we really don't know what the heck is going to happen with the markets on a day by day basis. The, the S&P 500 is up almost 220 uh, percent since the, the uh, 2009. We're almost at the we're, we're at the anniversary six years yeah, since, the, since the low. Uh, so be careful with using this, uh, these crazy big assumptions when it comes to market returns uh, because that's recency bias. You know, as the market has been doing well, you think it's going to continue to do well, and that's just not the case. Uh, another bad assumption is taxes. So let's dive into taxes, Al, and kind of explain a little bit about the tax code, and then I can get into some uh, tax planning strategies. Yeah, so let's go down uh, memory lane here, a little bit of history. So what this chart is showing you might be a little hard to see, but th these are the 
top marginal tax rates starting at the beginning of the tax code. And you can see in the 1910s, it was very low. In fact, it was under 10% for a few years. And then look what happened. It jumped to 70%, then it went down to 30. And then we had this very, very long period of high tax rates, 60%, 70%, even 90% for a period of time. Now what's happened since then during the Ronald Reagan years, it actually came down from 70% to 50% and then to 39.6, then to 35. But now we're going back up again, Joe. Yeah, if you take a look at this, right? It was 70% for what, 30 some odd years. Then Reagan came into office, brought it down to 50%. And then here's kind of the Bush tax cuts, right? And then now we're kind of spiking up. You got $18 trillion in debt. Where do you think tax rates are going to go? We believe that they are going to spike. We just don't know how high. So a couple of things that you want to make sure that you consider in regards to tax planning when it comes to your retirement accounts is that here, there's three different pools of money that you can invest in and they're all taxed differently. You have a tax free pool, you have a taxable pool, and you have a tax deferred pool. The tax deferred pool, I'll just call an IRA, an individual retirement account, or maybe you might have a 401k, a 403b, a TSP, a defined benefit plan, whatever. That would be tax deferred. All of your growth is growing tax deferred. Now, when you start pulling money out of this account, guess what? You are gonna be hit with ordinary income tax rates, the highest of rates. There is so much money sitting in these accounts and a lot of you retirees have your biggest asset in this pool. So when it comes time to start taking retirement distributions, guess what? You're going to be taxed at those ordinary income rates. We're big fans of tax-free money because when you pull dollars out of this account, guess what? You don't pay a dime in tax. What a tax-free asset could be is a Roth IRA. Maybe some of you have a Roth IRA, a Roth 401k, Roth 403b, anything with the good old Senator Roth's name on it. Every dollar that goes in there is an after-tax contribution, but it grows 100% tax-free. Think about that. You put 10 grand in, it grows to 100,000, you pull it out, zero taxes. As tax rates continue to go up, you have a pool, a safety net of money here that you can pull from and not have any tax. Now this pool here, this is a capital asset. Now you also have a special tax rate here, which is 15% for most of us. So if you look at the landscape of where people's assets are, you have a tax-free position, you have a taxable position, and you have a tax-deferred position. Well, we were told to do this. Put all your money into these accounts and let all of this defer because you'll be in a lower tax rate in retirement. Well, I'm telling you, if you saved any money and if all of your money is sitting in this account, as you're pulling money out, as we just looked at, most people are spending more money in retirement. As you're spending more money in retirement, all of that money is going to come from this pool stuck at these ordinary income rates, which potentially could take 20, 30, 40, 50 percent of your assets, right? So there's tax planning that you want to make sure that you take a look at. Get the money up here. There's two ways to do it. Start looking at making Roth IRA contributions. You can make a $5,500 contribution if you qualify. Another really cool strategy is taking money from this tax time bomb, this IRA and 401k, and start putting it up here into a Roth IRA. Now, you do have to pay the tax, but where do you think tax rates are going? Look at this. Where do you think tax rates are going? If you think they're going up, then it's a good idea to start loading money up here because then any future dollar is not gonna be subject to tax. Now, real quickly, tax rates work like this. They stair step, okay? And so let's say you got a 10%, 15%, 25, 28, and so on. Now, what we see is a lot of times people are just pulling everything from that tax deferred account and it's pushing these up in these higher rates. And if tax rates continue to go up, you're gonna be stuck paying these higher rates. Whoa! What we want you to do is do some planning here to keep you in these lower tax rates. We don't want you up here, I want you down here. How do you do that is have some diversification on how you're pulling your money out. This is gonna be your savior for most of you because when are you the most vulnerable? Think about it in your retirement years because you have no other income. This is gonna to come to you tax-free. If you're not doing any type of tax-free planning, we encourage you to talk to your CPA, a certified financial planner, or anyone that understands this. Hey, we gotta take a short break. I gotta get my breath. 
take a little sip of water, and then when we get back, we're gonna talk about some more myths, some more misconceptions, some more bad assumptions that you're making with your overall money, and then we'll get to your emails. So don't go anywhere. Show's called Your Money, and it's your wealth. Hey, welcome back uh, to the program. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Uh, I'm Joe Anderson, certified financial planner, president of Pure Financial Advisors with the big man, Big Al Clopine, uh, CPA extraordinaire. Uh, let's dive in. We got a lot of uh, stuff to cram in, Al. So let's go to what, the multiple choice question? There you go. According to a recent Gallup survey, the average age at which U.S. retirees report retiring is 62, 65, 66, or 70. What do you guys think? I would say most people would say 65. I would say so too because that's the Medicare age, but it's actually 62. And uh, actually according to Boston College in their recent survey, they said women are retiring at age 62 and men at 64. So a little bit different number. But the point is we're retiring in our early 60s. And Joe, that's not necessarily the best answer for a lot of people because we're taking Social Security early, we're, we're leaving benefits on the table, we're, we're getting into our nest egg a little bit earlier and so forth. Yeah, I get it. I mean, everyone's really anxious to get to the glory days, right? Uh, but you got to do the planning. People are retiring probably younger than they should. If you wait until 66, 70, you're going to be a lot better off because you're going to receive more Social Security income. You're going to be working longer, so you're not tapping into your nest egg earlier. You're going to have, uh, I guess the sad part is maybe a little bit shorter life expectancy in retirement. So all of those added together, um, you're going to have, I guess, more security. Uh, now, here's a really scary statistic, Al, which I think most people need to wake up and look at this, is that... Half of people are forced into early retirement. One half of all Americans are forced into early retirement. So if this doesn't motivate you to start planning, I don't know what is. Yeah, and it's uh, when you look at why, it's disabilities, caregiving responsibilities for parents or spouses, it's outdated skills, and it's company layoffs. And uh, when you're in your 60s, it's a little bit more difficult if you do get laid off to find work. And so what we find in a lot of cases, people have failed to plan they were, and they end up forced retirement earlier than they wanted to. Then they have to scale way back and that's really not what you want to do. Yes, and you know, when you look at disability, I think a lot of people look at that and they'll say, well, here, I'm pretty healthy. But it's not necessarily you. It could be your spouse. It could be a, you know, an aging parent. It could be your children. There's a variety of different things. So make sure to start now. All right, let's go to uh, the email bag. Let's see what uh, people are out there asking us. All right, this is my favorite part. Look at this, David in North Park. So can I still put money into a Roth IRA even if I'm not working? And the answer to that is maybe, <laughs> and here's why. So if it's just you, the answer is no. To do a Roth contribution, you need earned income, you need to be working to be able to contribute to a Roth IRA. But if you have a spouse that's working, you can use his or her earnings to do a Roth contribution, and you can always do a Roth conversion. That's taking money out of your IRA and converting it to a Roth, whether you're working or not. Yeah, that's a big misconception, Al, is that, all right, well, here, if you're not working, you can still put money from your IRA or 401k, and you can convert it into a Roth. It's just another way to put money into a Roth IRA for all of those dollars to grow 100% tax-free. So if you're not working, absolutely, you can still do a Roth IRA conversion as long as you have a qualified retirement account. You can convert some of those dollars in. And if you're not working, it would probably be a prime time to take a look at it because your taxable income is probably a lot lower. Uh, let's go to the final email question. Okay, we got one more here. And this is from Michael in Bonsall. He says, can you settle an argument? I don't think I can fund an IRA when I'm participating in a 401k. My wife thinks I can. Who is right? Uh, well, Michael, your wife is right. You can uh, participate in an IRA along with your 401k. You may or may not be able to take a tax deduction, but you can go ahead and contribute to your IRA. Yes, and you can also contribute to a Roth IRA as well. So if I'm fully funding my 401k plan, you can still contribute to a Roth IRA as long as your adjusted gross income um, allows you to. Uh, so Al, what is the, real quickly, what is the limitations for Roth IRA contributions if you're married, 183, 193? That's correct. So if you make more than 193,000, you can no longer do a Roth contribution. And single, it's what? 
it's one, 116,000 to 131,000 is one, the phase out. 131, and if you're married filing separately, it's $10,000, so don't Correct. do that. And that's it for us. Hopefully you enjoyed another wonderful episode of Your Money, Your Wealth. For Big Al Clopine, I'm Joe Anderson. Wait till next week. If you thought today was good, next week is going to be that much better. So join us. Again, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, everyone. We'll see you next week.